Welcome, welcome to Clear Vision Wednesday. Um, I'm your host, Claudia Mühlenweg. I'm the creator of the Natural Clear Vision Method and the Natural Clear Vision Institute, so the founder of the Institute. So I'm super happy to be here like every Wednesday. This is uh, the Clear Vision Wednesday show, and we bring you different topics all about vision improvement every week. So strategies, tips, techniques. Uh, we bring guest experts on a lot to talk about anything related to vision and eyesight improvement um, and just eyesight in general, because there's so many things we might not be thinking about. And today I want to talk about five core habits. And um, I will actually give you two bonus habits at the end. And I do have a guide that I will share with you at the end. It's called my 10 habits to help you have the eyes guide that goes deeper into additional habits. But let's talk a little bit about um, vision improvement because a lot of times, right? Like the eye doctor might tell you, oh, it's all genetic or it's all age related. And yes, genes do have an impact on our health and our eyes as does age, right? We cannot pretend that doesn't exist. If you've ever done a test with your true biological age, you might know that you, maybe your biological age is younger than your chronological age or the other way around. And if you have did a genetic test, you know that your genes are maybe not so great, then it's even more important to be vigilant about it and live you know, as healthily as you can. But I've also identified habits um, of people that I know personally, that I work with thousands of my clients, and also you know, even things like the Blue Zones documentary on Netflix by Dan Bittner. When I looked at you know, those things and I look at studies, we see research of certain um, populations like the Hansa that never really got into glasses or don't have vision problems. And so when you look at all these different studies, the different research, the different populations, the different habits, there's a few things that come, come into play. So the number one habit I want to talk about, it's actually kind of two rolled into one, but is not to start wearing glasses right away, right? So when you, if you already have glasses, so bear with me, if you if you don't have glasses yet, do not even start wearing glasses because glasses will just get you absolutely dependent on them and they will make your vision decline. Studies have shown this. So they're basically a treatment that makes your condition worse. Now, if you have blurry vision, you might be asking, well, what to do about it? There's obviously trainings like my vision improvement training course, my natural clear vision course, which we're launching right now. We have open enrollment right now for the next week. If that's something interesting to you, let me know. I will put it in the show notes. However, you know, whatever you decide, but taking some action and learning these habits that I'm talking about, in addition, you might need more support depending on your scenario. But one of these habits is that you, if you do need glasses, you only wear them when you absolutely have to. And ideally, again, you don't even start wearing them. And for the rest of the day, you might be, maybe things are teeny bit blurry, but you notice how your habits, your, your relaxation, how all these things have an impact on your vision because vision varies for everyone based on our nervous system state. So when you're really stressed, your vision will be more blurry than when you relax. So when your vision gets blurry, maybe you're like, oh, interesting, hmm, what's going on? Maybe I need to take a few deep breaths. Maybe I need to take a little break, whatever it is. So tuning in is really one thing. And then you only wear the glasses if you absolutely have to for something, right? Driving is always a safety issue, but everything else is more, more or less, in most cases, a comfort level. So I call this go naked, <laughs> go naked and no glasses on your face. And the other thing, the other piece of that habit is befriending the blur, like seeing the blur as a friend that actually tells you that you need to change something. So it's kind of like, I always say the engine light. On the car, we wouldn't ignore the engine light. We would, the engine light comes on, be like, oh, we need to check something. You know, maybe it just needs tune up or service, or maybe something else is wrong. So see blurry vision as the engine light coming on and see it as your friend. Um, and if you have glasses all the time on or contacts, you don't even notice what's happening. You're basically ignorant about the things that are going on under the hood, and that will make your vision worse long term. Now, the second habit is kind of it's a bigger category, but rest and relax. So what do I mean by that? When we, when we think about our health, right? We all know that we need to rest. We all need to, we know that we need to relax. And so um, our gut doesn't grow up when we're not re resting and relaxing. That's the whole parasympathetic nervous system state, being in a relaxed state. That's where everything functions, all the, all the healthy things in the body happening and in the mind. So relaxation is absolutely paramount. And when it comes to vision, 
There is a whole host of things that I teach in my program, but here are some basic, simple things you can do. Yawning. So it's simply yawning. Oh, it stretches your eye muscles, uh, your, not your eye muscles, but also your jaw muscles, your eye muscles too a little bit. Um, but it also tells your nervous system that it's okay, that you can be relaxed, that you know, don't need to be alert. So yawning lubricates the eyes. It stretches your tight jaw muscle, often a very tight muscle for us. So that's a simple thing you can do. Another way to rest, your eyes is blinking. So even if it's a nano split second, it gives your eyes a little bit of a rest. It helps you to prevent staring, like staring at something really hard, over-focusing. It also lubricates the eyes. So blinking and yawning are some of those basic, th simple habits that you can do. And when I look at people with great vision and you know, including my friend Sal, who passed away sadly at 101, but he blinked every second. So when I asked about those habits, he didn't notice, he didn't know he was blinking that much. It's just a habit that people with great vision always have. And the other thing you can do obviously is closing your eyes, right? You can just listen to my words. You can close your eyes. Sometimes we don't always need to look at things. Closing your eyes and maybe taking a few deep breaths. Speaking of another thing that helps is breathing. Just breathing a little bit more, noticing your breath, you know, putting one hand on the belly, letting your breath go into the belly, not so much up here, which is the stress-related stress breath. So just not dropping your shoulders and taking a few deep breaths. You can also make the exhales a little longer. So those are, I know this is a lot of habits rolled into one, but that idea of rest and relax. And obviously you can relax your eyes at the deepest level or rest them by palming, which is, I've talked about this many times. You close your eyes, you can, uh, my hands are a little cold right now, but you would rub them together if they're cold quickly. And then you cover your closed eyes with your cupped hands so that no light comes in. You support your elbows. And then you can stay here. It's kind of a little sweet timeout for your eyes. They get to rest a little bit. You want to support the elbows, drop the shoulders. Take a few deep breaths. I love to do this during meditation. You can do it during prayer. Whatever works for you, or you can just do it as a little mini break for yourself. I'm going to come out of this now because I'm talking, but you want to stay in palming as long as you like. Bring up happy thoughts. Really important not to be like, oh, got to do this, got to do that, got to do that. Bring up happy thoughts. You know, sometimes thinking of maybe have this anchor, what we call an anchor object, this idea like something that immediately relaxes you. This could be a place, a real or imaginary place. Be like, ah, oh, like a little mini vacation, having as a little mini vacation, okay? So that's habit number two, resting, relaxing, taking breaks, not powering through, you know, being eight hours on the computer without a break, being eight hours, like just focusing, focusing, focusing. We need to rest and relax, not just for the eyes, for the mind and the body too. The third habit is light. So people with great vision, and a lot of times I've noticed this, I'm observing this, trust me, everywhere I go, they don't wear sunglasses. They are they they're not light sensitive because they don't wear sunglasses. And I'm talking about normal conditions, not anything extreme. Um, I want to make sure as a medical disclaimer that I'm not giving medical advice here anyway. But if you have any eye conditions, takes any drugs that make you a little more light sensitive, if you're in any extreme conditions like bright snow, then definitely you want to have um, protection for your eyes. But if you're in just daily day-to-day -day life in your place where you live and it's not extreme, not wearing sunglasses, but instead putting on a hat, a cap, that usually helps your eyes, but you still get the full spectrum light into your eyes, which is very healthy. But you, if you don't like the eyes directly, the sunlight directly shining into your eyes, a lot of times just wearing a hat or a cap will do the job. So that's that's a daily sunlight exposure, especially in the morning and the evening. So to help you with your circadian rhythm, your sleep, this is now scientifically proven left and right so many times. Um, sunlight is very disinfectant. It helps with inflammation in the eye you have any inflammation. So getting your daily light exposure, and no, we cannot get that from full spectrum lamps. They are the better lamps, the indoor lamps, but you really want to go outside. It doesn't have to be sunny. It can be overcast. That's totally fine. Natural daylight is just an amazing thing. And people with good vision habits or good vision, they always spend a lot of time outdoors, right? They don't do, a, they don't 
practice necessarily anything. They just spend a lot of time outdoors and get let their eyes get some sunshine. All right, habit number four, this is a biggie too, movement. So poor vision is always related to some kind of staring, so kind of like locking your eyes in place. And the problem with glasses is, especially with the stigmatism correction, they lock your eyes in place because only the exact center of your glasses here is sharp. And glasses give you this idea that everything behind the glass is sharp and everything else is super blurry because you have bad vision and you think, but here's the thing, in reality, vision based on eye anatomy and my eyeball is right there in the back. I don't have it in my hand, but we only have perfect vision in the phobia, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny spot in our retina, right? Everywhere else in the retina, the vision is not sharp. And the more your eyes are moving, the more little snapshots they make, the better your visual experience will be and the sharper it will be. So glasses trick you into this wrong belief that everything behind the glass is sharp, which leads to staring and a lack of eye movement. And so, yes, in natural clear vision, I teach you different, many different protocols that you might, you know, you can test them out, what works for you to improve your little saccadic eye movements, those little vibrations. So that goes beyond, this is more involved than just something I can talk about. And people with great vision, I, their eyes are always moving, always moving. And what I want you to think about today here is think about curiosity. The first step in vision is curiosity, being interested, being interested in if something is happening. I can't tell you how many people I see where something is moving and they're not even looking or they're looking at their phone. They don't know what's going on in the world because they're staring at their phone or something else. So I was just filling up my water bottle and I noticed a tiny ant crawling on my shelf. This tiny movement, movement is peripheral vision is all about movement. I was like, what's that? So, you know, being interested and noticing things and that's where movement comes in, in the periphery, but then being interested in actually turning around and looking at it. So you want your head, your eyes see best when they're straight ahead. You see better when you look at me straight ahead as if you're doing this, right? So if you see something over there, then move your whole body, move your head around, look at the thing straight on. That is very important. And But it's driven by curiosity and interest. So you do not just want to move your eyes around. You want to move your whole attention. So I call this mind your head also. Like if you always move our eyes, that is great for stretching some of the eye muscles, but that can also be con um, creating a stigmatism if you habitually do the same thing when you move your eyes without your head. So moving eyes and head together. So, so think more about moving my attention and that could also be moving my attention from near to far. You know, the I said this many, many times, the 2020 rule, I think that is catchy, but super not something that's easy to implement. That means every 20 minutes, look up from your screen, look for 20 seconds, 20 feet in the distance. I mean, let's be honest, who sets a timer every 20, 20 minutes and has it's catchy. I'd rather have you set up your computer or your screen in front of a window so that you can move your attention frequently to other points on your screen, away from your screen. That's really important. And then the fifth habit that everybody with great vision, especially the centenarians, they have a mindset of gratitude and joy. And it talks about, you know, maybe these are overused words of gratitude, but they don't say I'm blind like a bat. My vision is so bad. I can't see anything. You know, even if they have a little bit maybe of a vision problem at that point, they take joy in what they see and they're grateful for the things in their life, their health, their friends, their, all the good things that come to them. So that is a huge thing, focusing on the abundance, focusing on the good things in your life, your joy. I teach something called Eyes Need Love, which is just talking to your eyes in a healthier way. Um, because most people that say they're blind like a bat have a, like a minor prescription. A minor prescription where you just have a feeling your vision isn't perfect, right? Um, if you keep talking like that, you actually induce blindness eventually, right? We know from quantum physics, your thoughts, your words, your all these things have an impact on your physiology, right? So change that around, talk positively. And another thing is just, just have this gratitude for your life. I have that in my clear morning rituals and natural vision. We always have um, don't if you don't want to call it affirmation, call it some kalpa from yoga, call it a mantra, call it just some saying nice things to myself. It doesn't matter what you call it, but focus each day. You know, I love this saying. I know it might sound cliche, but I love this. 
today is the first day of the rest of your life. And so I sometimes need to hear that in the morning to be like, oh, because you wake up, oh, all these things I played and it's like, it's going to be a long day. But then I'm thinking, oh no, today is the rest, the first day of the rest of my life. And what would the best version of me want to do today? How want I want to serve people? How do I want to show up? Those things, how do you want to show up for yourself, for your friends, for your family, okay? So two bonus habits. Two bonus habits. One is, and this is a huge piece of natural vision in my method in basic and vision improvement because we see in the brain, we see in the brain, guys, we do not see in the eyeballs. The eyeball is, is the portal to receive information and we see in the visual cortex in the brain, okay? Memory and imagination, huge piece of vision improvement. So people with, and this is also cognitive decline. This is not just related to vision. Co excuse me, cognitive decline, um, all these things. Play games, play games, play games that are fun. This is a game, and this is actually from, I don't know what store that is. This is a, you know, it's called a memory game. You know, you've all seen these things. And um, I, you know, I used to be so good at them and I noticed a little bit getting worse, but these are the games where you have two equal cards, right? And then you put them upside down and you you scatter them around and you can play that by yourself or you can play it with other people. Um, play it with yourself. And I recommend getting a physical thing, not a digital game. Um, puzzles are great. Puzzles are great, but again, physical puzzles are important because I've seen when people play them digitally on their little screens, they don't move their eyes much. They just move. They don't move much, and you can make it bigger. Versus if you have an actual puzzle, you're moving your you're moving your attention over there and over there, and you're trying to find the pieces. So you're moving your whole body again. So don't do the like as much as some apps are great, and I love technology. Do the physical stuff. So games like memory, right? That's a great game. Word puzzles, anything that will help you move your eyes, but also have fun. Have fun. You know, we need to don't make it an exercise. Most people with great vision play some kind of games. It could be, I saw the old guys in Southern France when I was there in Saint-Tropez playing bocce. You know, they, it's a community thing. They play games, but that helps your hand-eye coordination. You're moving, the, you know, you're, you're, you're practicing all these skills. So playing games, using your memory, using your imagination, dream, make, have dreams, right? Those things are super important. And then the last bonus and um, what I want to give you, that is more of an, what you could probably call an exercise, but checking your eyes, how they work together, fusion, right? How we have depth perception. And it's not so much a habit per se, but it's more of a kind of a way to make sure that you have good depth perception. In my free five-day training I was teaching last week, uh, on one of the days we did the hot dog. And the hot dog is when you have two fingers and you can, they can touch and they can be a little bit apart. But now you're not looking at the two fingers. If you look at two fingers, you want to only see two fingers, right? But I'm looking at the screen right now. I'm looking at you on the screen and I see a little floating sausage in the middle. And if I, it's attached like a sausage link, right? It's like the two fingers on the outside and then the two eyes together compose a third one. I always call that making three out of two. So now I have a sausage link. And if I move my fingers apart a little bit, it's a floating hot dog. Right? You can do that by looking in the distance. You can also do that by crossing your eyes and then you would also see a floating hot dog. Or like this game with the two finger game, the fingers where you, you want to hold them in front of your nose like in one line. And then you look at the, the one that's further away and you see two in front. You maybe want to, small, you want to see them equally well, not as a shadow. And then you look at the one closer to you here, this one. And now I see two fingers here. So this is just easy little things to have depth perception. You can do it with a tree. When you go on a hike, you can use one finger and the tree, or you can use two fingers and the tree, then you have three things. So having fun with your vision, being curious, being interested, you know, something like I teach too is like color of the day, pick a color of the day and then look out if you go, when you go on your walk, when you take the train, um, you know, whatever it is, you will be amazed how many things you see that you've never paid attention to. You know, so everybody now pick a color right now, type in the chat. If you're watching on YouTube, then um, type in the chat. Let me see, can I see the YouTube chat? Um, hey, hey, greetings. Okay, I see all the people greeting. Type your color in the chat right now. Okay, what is your color of the day? And then I want you to look out for that color. You can even do that when you're driving, obviously paying attention on the road, but what are the things? You know, you can say yellow, red, blue, green, you can also be more nuanced, light blue or 
you know, burnt orange or whatever. <laughs> I always love that color, burnt orange. Whatever it is, but pay attention and take, not for driving, obviously, but otherwise do it without your glasses and notice that color. Don't even care if you don't see exactly what the object is. I see yellow, 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 purple, blue, red, yellow, great, red. Lots of yellows and blue, pink. You know, you might notice blue, um, Shira posted that blue is, um, unless you have those certain flowers, blue is a lot of times artificial stuff. We do not have much blue in nature, right? Blueberries are actually more purple berries, but um, you know, most of the stuff here in Los Angeles, when I look out for blue, it's like the recycling trash bins, right? A lot of it is artificial. So having a color of the day will also, first of all, keep you in the present moment. This is my final word here. The present moment is the only time we have eyesight. Present moment. Future is foresight, imagination. Past is hindsight or memory. In the here and now is what we see. We see with our eyes only in the here and now. And how many times, how many hours a day are we somewhere else than in the here and now? We are in the future, we are in the past. That's another thing I see people with good vision habits. They're not distracted all the time thinking about stuff they should have done. They're really being the here and in the present. So I hope this was helpful. Let me put uh, links in the chat. So for we have one more. I'm teaching a free master class on... Friday, I taught one on Monday and one this morning. I'm putting that in the chat so you can register for that. And my 10 habits guide, which goes into we, I, memory and imagination is not in there, but a lot of the things I talked about today are in there and they're explained. The why, what, and how is explained in my guide. So get my free guide. And then that goes into detail into most of the habits I talked about today. So um, if there's any questions on YouTube, I will look for just a few more moments. But I don't see that. I don't see any questions. So I wish you a beautiful rest of your Wednesday on YouTube. Uh, we will see you next week. We do not know exactly what we're doing next week, but will that come? We will announce that soon. Um, hope, and we will invite amazing guest speakers in the future. So tell your friends about my channel. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy these, uh, these shows and these weekly live trainings. Um, subscribe and share with your friends. It will make me so happy to see my audience grow. And please post comments underneath. We will, I will always, I always go back. I do my best to go and answer all the questions. And I read pretty much all of them. Don't always have time to answer questions. We got, we got hundreds of comments each day, but it always makes my heart sing to hear that some, I just heard from one of my Clear Vision Club members in my community that she just met somebody who did natural clear vision. And I know exactly who it is. And he improved his vision by over a diopter of nearsightedness, removed his astigmatism, and can now pretty much do most of his tasks without glasses. And that's amazing. And these are the things, that's why I get up every morning, my ikigai, my purpose that combines my talents, my own story, and have helps so, um, solve a need in the world. And that's what I'm here to do. So subscribe, follow me, download my free 10 habits, and register for the class on Friday. I'm doing this only one more time live on Friday. So I would love to see you there. And